Coming to you from our opulent and luxurious 4x8 refurbished broom closet at the National Headquarters in Indianapolis. With duct tape, studio lights, and a mic that you barely can hear, we hope to entertain and educate you. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. I am your host, Mark Seavey, Special Projects Council of the American Legion. I'm joined, as always, well, I'll start with Ms. Ashley Gorbulja Moldonado from our nation's capital. Hello, Ashley. Hello, hello. Getting ready for a big move, so she's packing all her stuff. I know. Are you excited? I am very excited. It'll be a nice change of scenery. I will have more natural light in my new home. And um, I will have all the comforts of a military base. And all military neighbors, which would be nice. That would be very cool. (laughs) And I saved Jeff for last because I I can refer to him now as the Talma award-winning co-host of my podcast, Jeff Daly. Did you see that, Ashley? No. Jeff Daly was the big award winner from the American Legion Media Association this past week. Well, I'll be. Yeah, there'll be no living with Look him. Look how humble he's being right now. You the should two, be the, all over this. The two big winners were Jeff and uh, our photography friend from South Dakota who won the other award. I, I don't even know what the award was. I'm so, so proud. Hers was an innovation award for campaigns that she designed there. And Jeff won three different ones. What, what were the awards you won? Three. Well, the one he's the one he's thinking is going to make my hat stretch out was the the chairman's award, yeah. and then uh, mm-hmm. and then I directed a video tour for the Hollywood Post that won for visual media, and our website also won. I did like just a little bit of work on that, but I'm the only Talma member, so I uh, had to submit it, so my name gets attached to it. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. And I cool. and I know he's. I know he's still salty that his resolution didn't get passed at the NEC, but have you had a chance to listen to it yet? I all I saw was the the somebody's report where they mentioned I heard him mention that they're not technologically ready or able to do a digital uh, yearbook. Yeah, but they're moving towards that. They spent a they spent quite a bit for, for a resolution that did not get passed. Yours got more time than any resolution that did get passed. So, wow. I, I was, yeah, so Jeff is well on his way to, I mean, it is what, what it I, is. My next resolution will be that people who write resolutions should be able to testify because then I would tell them <laughs> that they don't need to have any technological things because they could still require people to print the yearbook that was just created digitally, but they didn't ask me to testify. So, That's, yeah, well. Yeah, there it, there it goes. All right, so we are really going to go for 40 minutes or less today. So All rapid fire? It's just... <laughs> All right, we're starting with you, Jeff. Start us off with a bang here. And now I got... <coughs> I got the coughs. Perfect. Great timing. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Topic number one, Pentagon denies veterans a parking lot for Memorial Day rolling to remember formerly known as CV. Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder. The motorcycle event, breaking 32-year-old tradition, tradition much older than Ashley. This comes from the Washington <laughs> Examiner. <Good point>. The- <laughs> it's, what that came is correct. First? What came Sorry, first, listeners Rolling out there, Thunder or baby. Ashley Grabolja? Who's older than I. <laughs> Not by that many years, but older than I. Yeah. So the Department of Defense denied a parking permit to the American Veterans Organization to use the Pentagon as a rallying point for the Memorial Day Rolling to Remember ride ending 32-year tradition. It's very disappointing and for our members, said AMVETS Executive Director Joe Shenelli. Shenelli? Anyone? There has been shock and deep disappointment expressed to us. The 32-year-old tradition brings biker veterans from around the country to ride around the nation's capital to honor service members who never came home from the nation's wars. 
The Pentagon's massive parking lot has traditionally served as the rallying point for the ride, allowing the veterans to gather and organize before setting off on their bikes. But this year, the Pentagon seemed hesitant to give the group a permit to use its lot, prompting a local news organization to call the Department of Defense in an attempt to get answers about why the group's permit had not yet been approved. Now, um, let's start with Ashley, because I know uh, Mark has so many things to say. Oh, I know. I can see him just, he's, sometimes I can tell the quicker he moves his chair or he kind of like shakes back and forth. Like I know yeah, he's ready I, this to go. One, this one, I, 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 I have thoughts. You have thoughts? Well, I will say I'm, I'm deeply saddened. I have actually witnessed this, you know, in DC and it is quite the spectacle. It is moving. I know it brings a lot of people together. Um, like, you know, in its formal title, you know, Rolling Thunder, like, it really is. Like, in, in D.C., just the way that, you know, the federal, like, you know, just the National Mall and that whole area is set up, like, it just echoes. And it's just, it's a profound experience. Um, so I am sad that it's it's not happening. And uh, I obviously think with everything that's happened in 2020, and I just think that that obviously probably has something to do with it, but... You know, there's always next year. I know it's I know it's 32 years straight in a row, but you know, like uh, it could it could, we could it could be revived. It could be done in 2022. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. All right, Marco. <laughs> no, I've, I so I've been, I've been there twice. As a matter of fact, the, I went the last time they held it. I at the last minute uh, I got assigned the story to cover it, so I drove from here to. Virginia and I actually my rental car got hit by a traffic cone that was thrown through the air in the middle of a tornado in Ohio no less oh, excellent. Uh, so I, I had a wild trip to get there if you've never been it's crazy to be a rider there because you go into the Pentagon parking lot and it is packed I mean it is I'm not going to people are on top of each it other is like, on top, it, everywhere and yeah it's it, it was like 500 degrees there because you're all on the pavement. There's nowhere. And then you do the ride, and the ride takes maybe five minutes. I mean, you go over the bridge, you go around, mm -hmm. but it was awesome. It, and it was great even as you approach the Pentagon. The bad guys here are the Pentagon. It, this, I don't think this has anything to do with politics. I think it's just the Pentagon because they tried to cancel this the last time. And, in fact, they said, we're not going to do it. And then Trump came out and was like, uh, to hell you're not going to do it. You're going to do it. And he overrode the Pentagon. This is an ongoing fight with the Pentagon. I don't know how much work they actually need to put into people using their parking lot, but it's apparently too onerous for them because they've been complaining about this for years. I hope it'll mm -hmm. come back. Uh, like, I hope it comes back for the people of D.C., as small business owners. It yeah. packs D.C. It goes on. We I think use some love right like, now. 11 in the morning and it goes until like four in the afternoon and then there's events all across the area mm -hmm. and it's it's get togethers hotels super it brings positive. a lot of people in a lot of people in it like the fact that the pentagon just like nah it's, it's too much like i barely see any pentagon people when i've gone there so the whole thing seems ridiculous yeah our legion post in fairfax does uh run to the thunder which uh they have like a barbecue there. It's it's just mm -hmm. such the Legion is such a huge part of it, and the Legion riders are usually very early on in the in the thing. Uh, it's, it's 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 just, just sad that it's not happening. And it but, seems like such a sonic booming voice, of, uh, representing and bringing attention to veterans. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, which the which the Pentagon should be you know kind of sympathetic to. Uh, to that cause. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a million resolutions on this written for you to read. I mean, it's not the first or the last time that I'll just shake my head in wonderment at what our five-sided puzzle palace does, but this one is truly a head scratcher. Oh there's my goodness. Really no downside to this. I don't understand what's happening, but it's depending on for you. All right, well, I'll, I'll take a quick uh, commercial break here and try to calm down from my hostility towards all those zeros over at the five-sided uh, Puzzle Palace, and then we will be back for topic <laughs> two in just a minute. Delete, delete. 
The American Legion is veteran strength in America. We are in your community, supporting veterans, service members, and their families, enriching the lives of young people and promoting citizenship and patriotism. Our members are passionate about these core values. Help strengthen America by joining the American Legion today. For more information, go to legion.org slash join. We are back and topic number two is you, Ashley. Go. All righty. So uh, an interesting article that posted and for our viewers out there um, who have been following uh, the military sexual assault policy and changes, um, top U.S. general drops opposition to change the military sexual assault policy. And its potential significant shift in the debate over combating sexual assault in the military, the nation's top general says he is dropping his opposition to the proposal to take decisions on sexual assault prosecution out of the hands of commanders. General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chief Staff, top, or excuse me, stops short of endorsing the changes recommended by an independent panel review. But in an interview with the Association or Associated Press and CNN, Milley said that he is now open to considering them because the problem of sexual assault in the military has persisted despite other efforts to solve it. Um, you know, let's see. Let me just double check here. Yeah, so he went on to say that, you know, We've been at it for years and we haven't effectively moved the needle, he said. We have to and we must. Um, what's really interesting about this is, um, you know, sexual assault has, you know, long plagued, you know, the military. It's triggered a widespread congressional um, just review, if you will, and it's frustrated military le uh, leaders struggling to find prevention, treatment, and prosecution efforts that work. And the most recent Department of Defense. Um, anonymous surveys done in 2018 found that more than 20,000 service members said that they had experienced some type of sexual assault, but only a third of those filed a formal complaint or a formal report, excuse me. And of those formal reports of sexual assault had steadily gone up since 2006, including a 13% jump in 2018 and a 3% increase in 2019, according to the Pentagon data. And the 2020 data is not yet available. Obviously, you know, with the Uniform Code of Military Justice over the past decade, you know, more civilian oversight to the military prosecution of sexual assault cases um, have been have been asked to, to beef up assistance for victims. Um, but lawmakers, you know, have long demanded more concrete shift, arguing that, you know, commanding officers should be stripped of the authority to decide whether serious crimes go to trial. Um, you know, obviously, for us all being service members, right, like, sometimes commanders are too close, right? There's a lot on the line, or they know people, or they know them, oh, they, they you know, they, like, oh, I know that person, they wouldn't do that, right? And um, it's just really interesting to see now this shift and him, and, you know, our, our top leader say something, and I know, um, what is it? Um, what's his first name? Austin, he's the Department of- Lloyd, Lloyd Austin. Lloyd, Lloyd Austin. He's the, remind Sorry, me who's, yeah. he's, he's Secretary of okay. Defense. Secretary of Defense, okay. Yeah, I know that, I don't believe that he's made a, a formal comment on, I could be incorrect, but, um, you know, it's just, I'm glad to see that, like, they're welcoming it with a fresh set of eyes. I think it has to be reviewed by a commission and has to be taken away from the strike. That's my personal opinion, as someone who unfortunately is a statistic of military sexual, you know, trauma. Um, who tried to report and nothing went through, who's still fighting a claim. Like, I, I really think that this change has to happen. Something has to be done. What do you guys think? Well, I don't know about, I don't know about the data, all that data stuff, but I, uh, I know a lot of, I know a lot of people who've had their lives negatively impacted and, and uh, I'm a big data guy, but sometimes anecdotal data, especially in something like this, because it's the stories that are more impactful than uh, reading about percentages and, and things like that. So I try to connect it to human beings. And I also want to connect it to the story that we did, because this, the story that we did uh, kind of kind of defines the problem. There was a there was someone who was accused and every person in the chain of command had assured the victim that the person would be uh, would be separated from the military and and faced and faced uh, consequence then the then the commanding i believe it was even a general the commanding general took it upon himself to ignore every recommendation from the chain of command and just the 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 
the the criminal, the felon, the deviant, if you actual deviant, if you will, uh, got off kind of scot free. And to me, at that moment, uh, was the moment where I said things, crimes of a serious nature, uh, probably should not rest in the uh, adjud or the adjudication of one individual because one individual can get it wrong. Multiple individuals are less likely to get it wrong. And in this case, I, in the case of the story that we did, and I wish I could remember the episode, but um, it, was, it was so clearly wrong and the motivations seemed wrong. It, wasn't, it didn't seem like it was a lack of judgment. It seemed like it was a lack of character. And it doesn't matter what jewelry you wear in your collar, you can have a lack of character. So I, I think giving ultimate power to someone because they're highly ranked in something that's very, very serious in their unit, which reflects badly on them as well, is the wrong approach to take. Yeah, I think Jeff actually banged. I'm not a, again, like for lower level offenses of whatever nature, uh, you know, like drunk driving or something. The commander usually is the one closest to it and he knows how much it actually impacts readiness and everything else. But Jeff's right on this one that there was too much, a commander could decline prosecution based on the fact that, well, if this is true, it's gonna reflect negatively on our unit and then I'm gonna get called. To I, I kind of agree with Millie. I'm not necessarily sure what the answer is, but nothing we've done so far has worked. So why not take it out? I, I, I'm fine with it. I, I agree with him. He, like I, my understanding of the way Millie's, again, he's chairman of the Joint Chief, his view was kind of like he wants the commanders to have control of the unit, but it, at some point you have to take it away. And I, th and I think this is the point. Will this trickle down to other less violent crimes and everything? I don't think it will. I mean, this is a pretty, pretty clear line of demarcation right here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think it, I think it is best time. I will say that I think the increase um, in reporting is actually a good thing. I think it's that the DOD has been a little more vocal about saying that if something has happened to you, report it. So I wouldn't necessarily take the number of reporting going up to mean that the incidence is growing up. It may very well be, but I would, I, I would think just based on what I know about the military, that it's probably more reporting and that more reporting is better, obviously. So, all right, let's move on to topic three. Um, this was a, this is one I've been following fairly closely here for a while. This was in the Washington Examiner and it's the White House is saying that US-China war over Taiwan could broaden quickly. Now, just as a uh, sort of an analog to why this is important to us, the American Legion is, we have long supported Taiwan. The American Legion has more resolutions on Taiwan than I think we have on any other country. We, from the days back when uh, JFK was actually saying that, that the Congress needed to do more to defend Taiwan, and this was back in the 50s and stuff, and the American Legion has a relationship with Taiwan where our national commander goes to the, to the Far East. He always visits Taiwan. So Taiwan is a, a big interest to us. But China and the United States face a growing likelihood of conflict over the uh, status of Taiwan, a contest that current and former officials fear could lead to an upheaval, since the worst upheaval since World War II. Uh, quote, I am sure that we are going to be in a kinetic conflict with China in five years, retired Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, the Pershing Chair in S Strategic Studies at the Center for European Policy Analysis said Wednesday. I hope I'm wrong, but I believe within the next five years, there's going to be a kinetic conflict. Um, and, I, and I'll just bypass the rest of this to say there was an exact same statement made by the head of the Australian SAS just in the past week. So I know the Australian SAS is getting ready. And when you think about how this conflict would, would kind of look, I mean, China's not going to half-ass it. They're going to go with everything. And that's going to cause the entire region from Japan, from the ANZAC troops, the United States, everybody's going to be involved in this one. So it's kind of a scary proposition. But Jeff, what did you make of this story? Uh, the way that you're, make, it's, you're making it sound like 
could become the next world war. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it because you know Russia extends into that region yeah. as well, and mm-hmm. they're no joke. And it would be interesting to see where they come down on this. It's also interesting to me that um, we've been preparing for this. Uh, the you know I, when I'm reading through headlines, Marines jumps out to me more than more than others, and uh, I've kind of I've kind of criticized the the current commandant be, for changing the entire Marine Corps just to fight this potential war, like getting rid of tanks, like just yeah. trying to be lighter and more maneuverable and more amphibious, if you will, just go island to island because there's a lot of islands that are going to be in play. Um, but now it's it, the the politics seem to be falling into place where that was a wise move. And, and quite frankly, they, they know things well before we do. They have clearance as well beyond my civilian curiosity clearance, which is all that I have. And right now, so uh, I'm I'm thinking that we are, we are the way that we're preparing for it and the other countries you said are preparing for it. Unless there's some really, really bold diplomacy, I feel like we're going to, we're going to end one forever war and get into another one. Ashley? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at a map here because like I'm a very visual person. So I literally just pulled up the world map because I just wanted to see in relation with Taiwan, right? So it's like directly north of the Philippines. You've got, um, you know, Vietnam due west. If you're like oriented, looking at like the way the map is. Yeah. Anyway, any whoosies. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, Vietnam, Laos, you right, like Mongolia. Cax, oh, gosh, it just. Hmm. If it were to go down, like, it's just I don't know, like, I'm just. It just makes me very nervous, it makes me very nervous. I don't know how else to other describe that to listeners. Just yeah. oh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. So. Yeah, and Indonesia is right there, and Indonesia has the largest uh, population of Muslims anywhere in the world, and the Chinese are obviously under fire for imprisoning the Uyghur people who are who are Muslims as well. So uh, everyone in the world, you know, in that area has laid some claim to the South China Sea. It, it would it would be rough uh, and obviously we wouldn't go it alone but uh, boy it could be rough all right well let's take another quick commercial break and we will be back here in 30 seconds so you were discharged with a 20 percent disability rating but now you can't hear so well and need help contact an american legion service officer service officers are free of charge and they help all veterans Find one near you with our online tool at legion.org forward slash service officers. All right, and we are back with rapid fire and we will start with this one. Uh, I'm not even going to read the whole story, but it's from the Marine Corps Times. Marines threatened to be charged leave for quarantine stays. Basically, the Marines, when they go on a deployment or come back off a deployment, have a mandatory uh you know, restriction time, if you will, to get over the pandemic. And the Marine Corps was talking about charging leave. I think it's a great idea. Jeff, what do you got on this one? <laughs> leave. Okay. Leave means you can do what? It's in the name. Leave. And if they're in quarantine, they can't leave, so they ain't on leave. And and leave, you also get, you know, you get your housing allowance because you're not on base. Are they going to pay that even though they're staying in the barracks? Uh, this is, this is, I don't want to say this about my core. This is crayon eating dumb. Yeah, this, I agree. This, this is, this is some jug heads trying to look like jar heads because I, I don't, I don't understand how a quarantine can be, a, a, first of all, a required quarantine. It's more like you got in trouble and you're on restriction and they're going to make them take their leave. Like you only get 30 days a year and now you're going to waste it on, on, on this. Yeah. That's uh, that is some, that's a new color of Crayola cuisine that I've never heard of. And it's ridiculous. Ashley. 
I first of all love that pun. That was wonderful. <laughs> Crayola cuisine. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna just just build in the quarantine days, why are you trying to make people like dig into their leave days it doesn't make any sense like if you're on quarantine you're on quarantine and then you can take your leave days like just don't it doesn't make sense to me there's somewhere there's some guy with a spreadsheet and it's like you know what's a great idea to save the marine corps money let's charge them for that time we lock them up. idiotic unbelievable and idiotic all right let's go to rapid fire number two which is a good story about the marine corps First U.S. Marine to wrestle in the Olympics since 1992. He's super humbled and grateful. Uh, Going to shout him out here. Staff Sergeant John Stefanowitz is ready to be an Olympian. 29 years old. He'll be wrestling in the uh, Greco-Roman. He's a member of the Armed Forces Sports Program All-Marine Wrestling Team. And he's going to be the first Marine to wrestle since 1992. Jeff, how hard are we going to be rooting for Staff Sergeant John Stefanowitz? All day. Every day. day, motivated. The guy's a stud. I saw the picture of him. He's definitely a stud. Ashley, what do you think about this one? Agree on the stud factor, and we'll be rooting for you, Staff yeah. Sergeant. I watch wrestling anyway because I was a college wrestler, so I watch all the <laughs> wrestling events. And uh, Ruan Gardner, I don't know if you, anybody remembers him, but he was – one of my favorite wrestlers of all time and uh, beat the Russians in a huge upset, the miracle on the mat. But anyway, we are going to be definitely rooting for you, uh, Staff Sergeant. So best of luck to you, my friend. Rapid fire number three, retired Ranger Colonel Ralph Puckett, 94, to receive the Medal of Honor for the Korean War battle that he fought, what, 70 years ago now. This is from the Army Times. And I'm just going to go into this briefly because y'all should just go and read about uh, retired Army Colonel Ralph Puckett. Total stud, left, he led 51 Rangers and nine Koreans across 800 yards of frozen rice paddles to seize and hold key terrain uh, on the Chung Chung River uh, in what was at the time North, was North Korea. Uh, they lost four Koreans, or four Rangers rather, and one Korean. I will say that I have Rangers who tell me that he is still a mentor to the young Rangers going through. I think that's spectacular. He got the distinguished service cross at the time. And it's now being upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Jeff, what'd you think about this one? Awesome sauce. And I want to point out that uh, somebody on YouTube has suggested that we cover this story. So I don't know if, I don't know if somebody, I'm, I'm sure that it, didn't influence because this is a big enough story as it is, but I love that somebody did and that we can now, we can now say that your wish was granted. So there you go. Yeah, I will say I did not see the comment, but uh, Colonel Ralph Puckett was, it was on my list prior to even hearing it, like, you know, and it would have been, uh, we would have discussed it earlier, but uh, the story is just coming out now, but Ashley, what'd you think about Colonel Ralph Puckett? So impressive. So, so impressive. And I'm so happy to see that, you know, he's, you know, getting an upgrade to his award. I mean, his story is incredible. As you said, Mark, like, go read his story. There's a really great photo of him. And he's just like, standing amongst all of these other, you know, uh, you know, soldiers, and he's got his little ranger hat on. And he's just like, he's just, I just want to hug him. <laughs> like, I love it. I love everything about this story. I love the fact that he gives back to all the younger guys that are coming through. I, I, I had in the past, I've been friends with uh, a guy who was the founder of the Marine sniping school. And he used to say even 45 years later, uh, major Jim land, if anyone knows who he is, he was the commander of Carlos Hathcock, but he used to say his favorite thing was going back and seeing the young Marines that were uh, graduating from sniper school. I think it's great that these guys get back and I'm congratulations, Colonel. Just want to say really quick, 1949, he was a West Point graduate, retired from the army in 1971. And he is in the Ranger hall of fame as of 1982. So he's kind of a his retirement guy. years. His retirement years are older than Ashley. All right. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> his yeah. retirement years almost older than me. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I wasn't even born when he was inducted into the Ranger Hall of Fame. Well, anyway. Rapid fire number four. I just found this one kind of funny. Uh, the Air Force flight in the Mideast uses the call sign Pickle Rick in an apparent nod to Rick and Morty. Now, I will say that we, we once had a 
a, a plan when I was in Afghanistan that was named after Britney Spears. So I'm a big fan of naming operations after contemporary, you know, there's probably a Cartman uh, operation out there or Stan and Kyle or anything else. But what do you think of this one, Jeff? Or should we be naming Should we be naming operations after Rick and Morty? I'm going to defer the Rick and Morty thing to you two nerds, but I did want to, I did want to mention, th- comment on your Britney Spears thing. I hope that it wasn't, oops, I did it again. It, it, Cause That's yeah. Bad. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. Go ahead, Ashley. What Nerd if it, it was up. like, what if it was lucky? You're so lucky. I don't know. You're I don't know Britney's. <laughs> I don't know Listen, Britney's catalog. I, Britney that, I don't know Spears. Britney's catalog that deep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love I love the Pickle Rick episode. Love watching Rick and Morty. Huge animation, um, satirical mockumentary kind of gal. So I have watched it thoroughly, and it makes me it makes me happy. Like it's great. I'm a South Park guy, so I I, I have been watching a lot of South Park lately, probably more than the healthy. All right, let's go to the shout outs. I'm going to start with mine. My shout out is to past National Commander Dave Rabine and to the National Executive Committee. They, at uh, apparently Commander Rabine, uh, recommended this resolution. And just this past week or two weeks ago now, the NEC passed resolution number six, strongly encouraging every American Legion baseball team to observe a moment of silence before games each year on June 2nd in memory of Major League Baseball's great Lou Gehrig and all veterans who suffer or died from ALS. Now, ALS, for those who don't know, is a presumptive military-connected issue. And uh, as irony would have it, on the day that this was passed, I found a picture that was the last time I was with my best friend before he passed away of Lou Gehrig's disease. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for ALS research and uh, Commander Rabine has always been a pretty close personal friend anyway, but this is another great thing that we're doing. So on uh, again, on June 2nd, we will be having moments of silence for all those that have had Lou Gehrig's disease who are veterans. So Ashley, do you have a shout out today? You know, I cannot remember the post and I I saw this story and it is about a post. I can't remember. Maybe you guys will know. Um, They raised money to buy a brand new trailer for a veteran and i cannot think of the post but i just want to like kudos to everyone involved with that project it was literally to help a veteran and like kind of a a decrepit state of like this home that like this mobile home that he had and they literally raised all this money and they raised i guess it was like surplus even more than they like gave it back to the community and i i wish i could remember what it was i'm so sorry i all i know is it happened and we shared the story on all of our social media channels and it brought me so much joy we'll put it in the show notes yeah, I, I I did read the story and you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I've okay. drawn a complete blank as to where it was. It did happen. It happened. All right, Jeffrey. All right. Uh, I do want I want to shout out the edge or no, the judge advocate for the Department of California, Chris uh-huh. Yates. Um, he's a hard charger Marine Corvette. He's a he's a warrant officer, so maybe we can find him some stories oh, about him. Good. Because <laughs> he was a gunner. He's a good, good, good. Legit, he's le- he's legit warrant officer. Um, he had listened and he listens to the show and he sends me messages. And uh, one of the things he did was he sent me a message on about the uh, Mike Irwin interview. And he he sent me a message going, have you joined RWB? And this was like 24 to 48 hours after the episode dropped. And I said that I had not. And he had already signed up for two. He'd already onboarded, signed up for two events, and is going to participate in the convention. So I wanted to give a shout out just for uh, listening and also for jumping into action, making us look good out there. And I think that that's going to, I think it's going to spark some more partnerships with team rwb especially in california so our little interview show is making big changes in the region look at that oh changing lives one rwb member at a time oh and he also he also bought this very cool marine corps polo shirt for me because i saw him wearing one and uh i don't get to pendleton to get to that exchange so he 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 got me one so it's even, an, it's even an Under Armour one, which is high quality oh, yeah. there. Yeah. 
All right, folks, don't forget to subscribe to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, don't forget to rate us, preferably five stars, and leave us a review. Uh, And if you're really thoughtful, we will probably read it on a future episode. Uh, You can also send us feedback to tangoalphalima at legion.org. If you have any ideas for guests or topics, I got you with the Colonel Pocket, so I beat you to that one. But uh, everyone, we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Bye.